everyone. This video is going to cover zero and negative exponents. Okay, so let's look at zero exponents. We've, we've looked at the division rule in um, most classes by now. So with exponents, the rule of division is that you subtract the exponents. So if you think of something like I have x squared over x squared um, as a fraction, you know that they're the same thing, so when they divide into each other, they give you 1. Well, if we follow the rules of subtracting the exponents, then you'd get a 0, which makes uh, the answer still going to become a 1. That's kind of the idea of where this 0 exponent um, rule comes from. So really, it's anything to the 0 to the 0 is 1. And let me give you some examples of what I mean by anything to the 0 power is 1. So let's say we just have x to the 0 power. That just is going to equal 1. Okay, so that's our rule. Um, if we look at uh, something like I was just saying, x squared over x squared. This is what I was saying where we know they divide into each other and they equal 1. So you might recognize that right away. But if you didn't, you could follow the rules of 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is x to the 0, which also equals 1. And that's where this idea of something to the 0 power equals 1 comes from, is division. Uh, and so that's you know where we get it. I can make you, though, anything. to the 0 power. It can be ugly. 2y squared x to the third, all to the 0. What is this going to equal? 1. Doesn't matter what it is, if you have anything to the 0 power, it equals 1. So that's our 0 power rules, uh, or rule, I should say. Let's look at the negative exponents. So negative exponents are, are very separate from zero. We just put them together because they're both a little bit shorter idea. Okay, so um, the biggest thing with negative exponents is you aren't allowed a negative exponent, so you can't put in an answer with a negative exponent unless you're doing scientific notation. Then they let you. That's about the only place. Otherwise, they want you to get rid of it. So let's look at what I first have. If I have something like x to the negative 2, and then we'll, I'll show you like the general rule for it. So I can't have this negative exponent. We're not talking about negative in front of the number. We're talking about the exponent being negative. So what I do is if it's in the numerator, I move it to the denominator. Just that term, just that x part. Um, if it's in the new, uh, denominator, you move it to the numerator. So you're kind of switching where it's at, and you're keeping the number on the exponent but just taking the negative off. So this one is already in the numerator so it's going to become uh, 1 over x squared without the negative and so it moved from the numerator to the denominator and it lost the negative in that process. Okay so let's look at another one. What if I have like 3 y to the negative fourth power? So what has a negative exponent? only the y. The 3 is its own number. Remember when we write them next to each other we're being lazy and there really should be a time symbol between each number or letter or term. So what we really want to do for this one is we're going to keep the 3 in the numerator because it doesn't have a negative exponent but we'll take that y and we'll move it down and it's going to lose the negative exponent but keep the number so it becomes y to the fourth down in the denominator. So what if I had, I don't know, 4 over x to the negative third power? So if I have 4 over x negative third, so now the negative's in the denominator, which isn't as common unless I'm doing this um, homework, um, we want to move that up. Okay, so the 4 doesn't have a negative, so the 4 stays where it's at, and the x is now going to join it and become 4x to the third, and we could put it over 1 because we moved everything up. We can leave a 1, kind of a placeholder like we did here, but we don't have to write the 1 when it's in the denominator. We have to write it if it's in the numerator. So if everything moves, you have to leave a 1, and it's just a placeholder. Um, or, you know, you think about 
well, anyway, just think of it as, I guess, a placeholder. Okay, let's see. Um, what if I had, I'm going to do one more. What if I had something like 3x to the fourth, y to the third, all to the negative um, 2 power? So something like this. What this is saying is this whole thing is to the negative 2 power, so you have to flip the whole thing over and then take each one to the second power. So this is actually going to become 1 over 3x to the fourth, y to the third squared. And then the rule with a square on the outside is that you times it by the exponents inside. And I can't remember if this has quite been showed in uh, the algebra or integrated course one, but um, it's still something you will learn at some point. I'm, I can't remember if it's yet though. So three will become squared also, which is nine. And then when you have an exponent, you times them. So you take the numbers to the power, but then the, the letters, you times them. So x becomes an eighth, y becomes a sixth. All right? So I can still simplify a whole chunk of negatives by, again, moving them and then doing whatever else the problem um, has you do. So that covers 5-1 in integrated course 1 or somebody else who maybe just needs a general idea of a negative or a zero exponent.